Hello YouTube, today I'm in Kerbal Space Program and this is my space shuttle. I've probably spent around six hours in total building this and making it work. This is a completely stock, um, no cheat menu or anything, space shuttle that works and works in the exact same way as the space shuttle in real life. I'll show you in a minute how to fly it, but first of all I'd like to say that uh, the craft file will be in the description and um, you know if you want to try it out, modify it, um, you know, feel free to. Uh, that said, if you modify it and like want to post things about it, just give me a bit of credit or something, be nice, um, as always. And yeah, this is it. It works completely. It can get into maybe 75 km or 80 km orbit if you fly efficiently. And yeah, I'll switch to post-commentary now as I show you the flight that I made. And uh, yeah, um, it can make it pretty much every time now. I've done two flights with this this sort of version of it. Um, in the sense that I did one earlier on, was a, which was the first test flight, which didn't have solar panels on it, but apart from that it was completely the same. And that worked, and then I recorded the next one. Uh, the next proper, which was the first proper flight, which made it all the way. And uh, the solar panels helped. Because uh, I, I found out I needed those. Anyway, I'll talk a bit about that later on, but uh, yeah. What I'm going to do now is switch to post-commentary and take you through the process of actually getting it into orbit, because it's not easy. Um, it's not the easiest thing to do. Anyway, I'll see you then. So we're here on the launch pad now, and as you can see, we just hit SAS throttle up to two thirds, and that's what we have to do to launch, and then we wait till we get past the launch clamps. And then we go to full throttle, and we basically need to balance out our pitch so that um, our prograde vector points straight, straight upwards on the nav ball. And then once you've done that, it should be fairly stable. You should be able to just leave it with SAS on and it should actually work. So the reaction wheels are doing quite a lot of work here and as I said the before the difficulty with this was actually getting the center of mass to stay in line with the center of thrust of the engines on the space shuttle because the reason there isn't an engine on the main fuel tank is because um, you essentially uh, want to have the engines on the bit that's definitely going to come home safe or is most likely to come home safe I think is the idea. Uh, so the expensive engines are left on the space shuttle. Uh, in real life, the space shuttle doesn't carry anywhere near as much fuel on board, it's a lot more on the other thing. Anyway, we just saw there, we jettisoned the um, solid boosters just before they ran out of fuel, so they made sure they got out of the wave so they didn't hit anything when they came off. And now we're just balancing it again um, with you know pitch, uh, so that we actually end up going pretty much straight up. And then we're going to start a standard gravity turn at around 9 or 10 kilometers. And we want to be at the 45 degrees pitch by the time we get to maybe 12 kilometers or so. At which point we can leave it there and start to do some other things, which I'll show you how to do in a second, or you'll see how to do in a second. This is post-commentary, though. Um, so yeah, everything's going reasonably well, and you can see I'm starting to pitch over there. Um, it's interesting to see, this is actually how the space shuttle in real life goes over. It goes over on its back, and that's for a few reasons. I think the main one being that actually it um, doesn't give any negative G's for the astronauts. It gives them positive G's, which apparently is a good thing. So that's, I think that's one of the reasons. Anyway, you see here, I transfer all the liquid fuel out of the MK3 fuselages because that actually helps with the balance, but it also, um, you know, it's a waste of um, delta V to have them actually in there. So you may as well get rid of them. So it does two, two jobs there. Now we're getting up to nearly 20 kilometers, which is the point at which we need to start thinking about um, pitching down a little bit more. So we're actually going to pitch to 25 degrees, I found works well, between 25 and 30. I'd say go for 30 if it's your first shot, um, you'll be left with a little bit left, less fuel after circularizing to get back down again, but you should still be able to do it. So go for 25 to 30 degrees there, depending on how efficiently you've made the first bit of your ascent. Uh, but you should be okay, 25 to 30 as I said is the magic number there. And uh, then you just need to keep burning like that until your apoapsis gets up to, well basically until you run out of fuel, because when you run out of fuel your apoapsis will be at around 70, 70, 70 to 80 kilometers basically. And that's where we want it, and then we're going to have to split off from this and circularize. Anyway, you can see the um, apoapsis going up there, and we are still running out of fuel. We're just trying to flick between them basically, and there we go. We're on our last tens of um, units of oxidizer, and that's it run out there. So we're at 71 kilometers apoapsis. That's pretty much as perfect as you can get it, because you don't want to get an apoapsis that's too high, 
and then not be able to circularize because you spent too much fuel um, you know making your orbit high rather than elongated and now we split off we switch, flip over first um, just because that's the safest thing to do I guess and now we're just using these LV909s and um, the staging automatically activates those you don't have to worry about that um, and those are on separate fuel tanks which aren't linked to anything which means that you don't have to worry about turning off the other engines or anything and now I'm just going to time warp a little bit until we get uh, to the very outer edge of the atmosphere and then we're going to make a circularization burn. I do have a tutorial on this somewhere which goes over this method where you don't actually make a maneuver node or anything, you just keep burning and then adjusting your pitch to make sure your apoapsis stays somewhere near you. And that's the technique I use here. But basically I'm just trying to burn to elongate my orbit. And I basically want to burn as soon as I can in that sense because uh, the earlier I burn, the more I'll be able to spread it out properly without having to pitch up or down, which is less efficient. And this will also increase my apoapsis by a few kilometers as well, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, so you can see there, just watching the apoapsis go up as it sort of moves towards me, or I move towards it, I'm going to start uh, titching, <laughs> titching, tilting, or pitching up until the um, till until essentially doesn't keep moving towards me or I don't keep moving towards it because I do want to keep it ahead of me so that I have control over it in a sense and then when it gets to the final adjustments I can just wait till I get right to the apoapsis and burn and bring the periapsis up to what it needs to be which is the easiest way to do it but I have a bit more information on that in the tutorial I have on that on my channel so go and check that out if you don't know how to do it um, anyway <clears throat> This is the point where we realize if we actually made the ascent efficiently enough because if we can make it into orbit with a little bit of fuel left to spare, you don't actually need that much left to spare, then you should be able to make it home. And we are going to aim to go for the KSC, actually, if, if we can. So this is the most difficult part, well the most difficult part's gone really, that was the launch, but uh, once, once you've got this down, as long as you can circularize and have a bit of fuel left, then you've pretty much made the mission. As long as you can land on land, then you're okay, but we're going to aim for the KSC, yeah, just to be authentic. You can see the last one on the map there, the last mission, the test, first test flight that we actually tried to get into orbit, um, and that's on the other side of the continent that the KSC is on, on the left hand side of the screen there. And that you know it worked, but it didn't have a very good control when it went back within the atmosphere. And there you go. You can see we've got the periapsis up now. Just trying to make everything work. There we are, 76 kilometers and 72 kilometers, I believe it is, um, which is pretty good, pretty circular, um, good enough anyway. And we've still got, I think it's 43 units of oxidizer left, which isn't too bad. Anyway, we fade until we make this uh, burn retrograde, after we've orbited for a bit, and yeah, we're going to aim for the KSC. Uh, using the knowledge I gained from the past launch, I tried to make this as best as I could. And it's not easy, but we make it pretty close anyway. Um, you'll see that, and I think you should keep watching till the end, because you'll be in intrigued to see how this works out. And it, I think it goes pretty well. I think this is probably... I'm, I'm not going to call anything, obviously, but I th I'm, in my opinion, I think this is, and from what I've seen, I think this is going to be the best recreation of the space shuttle that is completely stock ever. Uh, yeah, I called it. You saw it here first. Um, so, you know, you may not agree with me. You may, able to, may be able to make something better, but this is the, definitely the best one I've ever seen. And you can see we're just trying to line this up so that um, we actually end up with... A trajectory which is going to lead us to the KSC and I actually think I'm going to over overcook this a little bit so I end up trying to point downwards uh, to pull myself down towards Kerbin when we get to the thicker parts of the atmosphere uh, but we're still high enough up now that we can't really do anything so we just have to wait and time warp but we're still going at 2.2 kilometers a second there we've not really hit the thick part of the atmosphere yet and the re-entry effects look pretty cool I'm not gonna lie um, so the actual, yeah, you can see the other ship there just popping up. <laughs> there we go. That's the other one, and we're flying well over that. And that has Jebediah and Bill and Bob inside it as well, which is the reason they're not in this flight. But anyway, it looks like, yeah, so this is the point where I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, nah, we're not going to make this. But uh, yeah, we actually come do pretty well, I think. So 
and you can see there the re-entry effects were just starting to happen. And I'm just trying to watch this trajectory, because I, if I can make it, then I'll try and make it. If I can't make it, then I'll try and pull off to the side. Um, but I just try and go for it. I think that's usually the best thing to do. And actually, as um, you know, as we start to hit the thicker parts of the atmosphere, I think, oh yeah, we might actually be able to do this. Uh, we're coming in really, really close. Just by sort of pointing down, we're pulling our prograde marker really far down with the wings, which obviously wouldn't be possible in real life. But uh, it's the best, you know, it's Kerbal Space Program. The aerodynamics aren't perfect anyway. And yeah, it looks like we actually might be able to do this. So. At this point, I'm thinking, okay, and I need to make, I need to get this right. If I screw this up, then we won't be able to land at the KSC. And it's kind of annoying because you can't quick save while you're in the atmosphere. Uh, I wish you could, because it would make this kind of thing a lot less stressful. Because you could just quick save now. And yeah, looks like we're going to be okay though. Um, even though we have a little bit short trajectory now. But yeah, I think quick saving would work. I think quick saving would be a good thing in atmosphere if they could implement it. Anyway, yeah, so th at this point I'm thinking, okay, now we're actually falling a bit short, so I'm going to have to pitch up a bit. And I decided to time warp now. Um, and you can see, I notice here looking down at that I'm way offline. I'm going to need to tilt to the left a little bit to try and land. Um, and there we go, that looks like it's actually working quite well. And the Kerbals are looking pretty happy about it too. And the gear's out. Where everything's pretty much ready to go, so we're just coming in on our final descent. We're going at around 100 meters a second now as well. We've reduced in speed, you know, drastically, and that's going down all the time as we get into the lower, thicker parts of the atmosphere. And at this point, I decide to pitch down a little bit because I want to come in. I don't want to come and sort of come down hard on the landing strip. I want to sort of come in and smoothly glide and pull up at the last second uh, onto the strip if I can. So I just almost sort of try and point just short of it, so that at the last second, if I pull up. Um, then I will. That will work. And now, just pulling up a little bit more. This thing is an actual. It's it's really really nice to glide. It's especially in the thicker parts of the atmosphere. This works really really well. And it's probably you know it's well it's definitely a lot easier to fly like this than it is to pilot up into space. But uh, it's also you know incredibly um, incredibly. It feels really well balanced. It it just works. And I really like this. Anyway, now I'm thinking, oh my goodness, we might actually be able to land on the runway. I mean, from all the way from orbit. This is this will be by far the best landing I've ever made in Kerbal Space Program. Um, the mo one that I'm most proud of as well, after all the hours that I've put into this ship. The first proper flight it actually makes, <laughs> you know, and makes it home safe is one thing. But making it home safe at the Kerbal Space Center is pretty damn awesome. And you can see the shadow there as well, looming up. Uh, getting bigger and bigger as we get closer and closer to the ground. And I've, I've never actually tried, apart from that last attempt where, the test flight, I've never actually tried to land um, at, straight at the KSC with, on a, like doing an unpowered landing, basically making a burn from orbit and then everything else is gliding. I've never tried that. So considering this is the second time I tried it, I think I did pretty well. Probably got a bit lucky. But uh, yeah, I think I did pretty well. And there we go, we're coming down at uh, around 5 meters a second vertical and actually we pull up a little bit here and it comes down to about 3 meters a second vertical and around 40 meters a second actual velocity, surface velocity. And we touch down, turn off SVS and everything's looking good. We get a bit of lag there, I don't even know why that was, but uh, yeah, everything's looking pretty good. And we've made a successful touchdown. So, before I go, uh, a few things I'd like to say, as I said before, the craft file will be in the description, feel free to use it and modify it. And I'd like to hear from you if you can do anything crazy with it, if you've modified it as well, that'd be pretty awesome. Feel free to put stuff on Reddit, just, you know, give me a bit of credit. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it for this video, guys. So, if you like the video, as always, please give the video a thumbs up or a favourite or something, because that really helps me, especially after the amount of time I've put into this. Jeez. <laughs> so yeah, as, as always, thanks for watching and have a nice day.